Welcome back to the Hill on News Nation. Tonight, the Middle East is on edge and breaking news in the past hour word of several U.S. personnel hurt in a suspected rocket attack on an airbase in western Iraq. That attack, as President Joe Biden gathered his national security team in the Situation Room at the White House this afternoon, Israel and the world bracing for retaliation from Iran. The United States now joins the growing list of nations urging their citizens to leave Lebanon, quote, booking any ticket available. Joining us now, retired four-star General Wesley Clark. He's the former NATO Supreme Allied Commander in Europe and also the chairman and CEO of Wesley Clark and Associates. General, thank you for making time for us today. Uh, take us into that room with the president's national security team. What's it like in there? What's going on? How does this discussion work? Well, they're going to report that uh, the disposition of U.S. assets first. They're going to say the ships are mostly there, the aircraft have been deployed, everybody in the region is on alert. There'll be talk um, from the agency about what the latest um, estimate is of what Iran's going to do. What we don't know from the outside is whether um, there's been um, any detailed information gathered by, let's say, Jordan or other friends in the region about the Iranian uh, projected response. If you were to okay. guess what it would be, it would be much like what happened the last time. So how, how much hard, yeah, that, well, I want to get to that. The, are you talking about last time in April when Iran responded, but it was mostly ineffective, right? Yep, it was. It was mostly ineffective. About half the ballistic missiles failed. And the drones were all shot down, with a couple of exceptions. So now, uh, th this is conjecture, I know. But was Iran trying to not succeed too much in April? Uh, that th that it was intentionally they were looking for uh, some sort of proportional response that wouldn't escalate things, or were they trying to do more and failed? What what was your assessment in the spring? I think they uh, were trying to show to their domestic public Iran's power. They were trying not to lose faith with their terrorists in the region, uh, and they were trying to show something of technology without provoking a strong Israeli response. So does that increase the stakes when it comes to face saving? I mean, we're talking here about a strike or uh, a, a, an attack inside Tehran, inside their capital. Uh, the the need to show that they are standing up to Israel here uh, is greater given the, the, the failure in April. Is that right? I think that's right. And I think that um, for this reason, they probably haven't telegraphed what they're going to do the same way they did in April. Uh, and I think that they're trying to calibrate this so they can <clears throat> raise the, uh, the, the stakes in this without provoking an Israeli strike on their nuclear assets. This is a way um, of Iran getting closer and closer to the sort of red line that's going to bring a really strong Israeli response. I want to very quickly get your take on the situation in Venezuela before we have to let you go. Uh, what What is going on there? We have uh, strongman Maduro hold, clinging to power in an apparent event uh, despite losing an election. What are the national security implications here? This is a huge oil producer. This is a big country. This is an important country in the Western Hemisphere. What do we see there? The U.S. has tried to work positively with Maduro. Um, he, he deflected what we offered. We reimposed sanctions. He cheated in the election, obviously. At least that's our uh, assessment. And um, he's going to hold on to power through force. It's a threat to neighboring Guyana, which also has huge oil deposits in there and a really bad sign for the United States, and it puts additional pressure on the refugee flow coming north out of Venezuela through Colombia. General Clark, we thank you so much. Thank you for watching, and make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.